Welcome back to Duckman Cycles of VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> well, we're back today, and I'm not going to work on the 1956 Beetle because I don't have a whole lot of daylight left. But tomorrow's car show, and tomorrow is also a car cruise-in, where we take a trip around the racetrack here in Pensacola, right around the Five Flags Speedway. And we use that to promote the car show that's coming up uh, next month. Our big car show is on October 20th of 2018, and I believe it's our 22nd show. I have to look that up just to be uh, probably wrong, but it's our 22nd show. If you're in the Pensacola area and you're interested in joining our car show, please hit up rareairvw.com and uh, get yourself entered in the car show. Like I said, it's coming up October 20th. I will be there, Eleanor will be there, and probably Skeeter. And if I'm very, very lucky, the Doodle Bastard will be there too. I don't know if I have it running, but we're going to try to get it there anyway. I plan not to be my pit bike this year, but it may not get that far. I've been putting a lot more time into getting Eleanor together instead. Anyways, today, we're not actually going to work on that at all. Today, I'm actually taking a little bit of break, and uh, I have to get the fastback together because I'm going to be driving it. And for some reason, I don't know why, just all the lights on it, it just went all, all kinds of friggin' screwy. Just at different times, different things broke. First, the high beam stopped working. And then all of a sudden, the turn signals. Instead of doing a tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock that they always do, instead it went boing, like a spring. Just boing. And they never worked again. That was the end of it. So I think I lost the, uh, the, the turn signal flasher relay in there. I think I lost the dimmer relay in the, uh, the high beam switch. Or the switch is bad. I got a feeling it's probably the, uh, the high beam relay, though, because I had it out once before. And what the funny thing is, is when you squeeze it, not the connectors, but just squeeze the case of it, it would work. So I don't know what the hell that's about, but it's an old vintage part, so it's probably every bit as old as the car is. And uh, I got a new one. A new one's plastic. The other one was metal with a Bakelite cover on the back side of it. Not even plastic, it was like Bakelite. And the new one is all plastic. I mean, it's very obvious these, uh, the difference in parts, but the new one is actually a proper brand name, so let's see if it's actually going to be any good. I believe it was like a, like a Hella or something like that. I mean, it had a proper proper name on it. So we're going to try to get those fixed today. We're going to try to get the lights straightened out on the fastback, and as you see, it's starting to pour again. The good thing is the fastback is inside of a tent, so I can go in there and uh, not get rained on. It's going to be really humid, though, and there's probably going to be a ton of mosquitoes in there, and I don't know why, but the mosquitoes love to go inside the tent. Anyways, like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you join my Facebook page over on Facebook, Duckman Cycles VW Garage. Join the group. Get yourself in there. We're always talking about projects. If not mine, someone else's. you got a project you only want to share. you got a story you want to share. I want to know it. You can post it over there on the group. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out my other channels just the same. BB the Duck VV and Skeeter the Duck. Duckman Cycles right here. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in just a minute. Bye. Okay, we're back. We're inside my 1968 Volkswagen Fastback, and I'm uh, inside the tent shed. And if you're looking at the sides of the tent, you can see the glow, because no sooner I got out here, guess what happened? It stopped raining. <laughs> so anyways, we're going to have a look at these uh, headlight relay bits, because when I turn on the ignition and turn on the lights, and you can see the lights are on, it's a little dim on that side over here to the uh, left, because there's actually a bad ground under the hood. And I know because I actually, there it is, it just popped on. Because I actually was moving some junk around inside the trunk and uh, that's when the headlight went dim. So I gotta check where the wire's at and just snug the screw down on it. Not a big deal. But when I pull on the lever for high beam, it don't go blinky blinky. And this is the uh, dimmer relay for it right here. I can already tell by looking at the wiring on this that it's different than the settings that are on the uh, the one that I just bought. So I might even have to do a little bit of homework here and figure out what it is that's wrong, or perhaps if I ordered the wrong part. Yeah, the poles on it are all different. Now, it doesn't mean it's completely wrong, though. I mean, I might be able to still hook it up. It just uh, might be a revised edition of the flasher that's in here. But anyway, I'm gonna move the car out into the daylight where I've got a little more sun because it's a bit dark in here. And uh, we're gonna see if we can figure this sucker out. And then after that, we also need to work on a turn signal relay, which is this guy here. And when I turn the signal on, you know, nothing happens. Don't get anything at all, including when I pull on the warning flasher. The light comes on solid, no blinky blinky. All right, let's pull this car out of here. 
Now it's a good idea when you're doing this kind of work on electrical on any car to disconnect the battery. And I'm going to tell you to do that and I'm going to tell you to listen to me and not do as I do because I'm not actually going to do that because I've done this stuff a million times and I know what not to touch the ground and how not to short things. Sure, people do have accidents, but I'm not one of those people that usually does. So in my case, I'm not going to worry too much about it because it's going to be a quick flip and swap of these little devices here that are busted. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, that was real quick. The sky's already blue again. I see some clouds over in this direction over here, which is to the north, which is the direction the storm actually came. And way off there on the distance on the horizon, you see them clouds disappearing. And that blew in real fast and blew away just as fast as it came in. <laughs> well, time to pull the fast back out of the shed. I figured we go ahead and start with the uh, turn signal relay first since that's actually much easier to get to. Now all the terminals on these actually have labels and you can see them all labeled on there. Each one has a different symbol and you want to make the match what you've got. So whatever wire you take off, put it on the identical terminal that it came off of. This is actually really, really easy to do. Now if you watch me do the relay video on my 1973 Beetle, you remember I mentioned those labels on the relays before. And this is kind of the same principle. You're going to be hooking them up just like this here. Now I'm using a pair of needle nose pliers because sometimes these connectors are really hard to remove. And it's usually just a lot easier to do it with a pair of pimple poppers. Okay, i got one more wire. This actually might be done as quick as that. And I hate the way all these wires are exposed. This is one of the reasons why Volkswagens have so many fires. And ignition on, turn signals. That was it. It's working. Easy as that. Yay. Check it out. Good call on that one. I mean, I knew right away when I heard it go ping that something was wrong. All right, we'll shut that back off and off to the headlight relay. Now this one is gonna be much more complex. We already know that we're gonna have an issue here, but these are labeled, kinda. You know, I don't see labels on the bottom here. I'm gonna have to look at this more closely. No, they are labeled. It's just, it's in the, uh, it's in the casting of the plastic. Yeah, you can actually see them now. They're not actually printed on like they were on the other one. So these are, aren't as easy to see, but yes, they are labeled. Now the deal is you wanna pop the wires off of that one and again, match the labels. The terminals are gonna be different. And I believe that this one is actually going to require either an external ground or an external power source. I might have to hook a special jumper wire up to it. So uh, we're about to find that out now as we start pulling this apart. All right, remember, one wire at a time. Well, while I was doinking around under here trying to read these labels, I squeezed this metal box again, and guess what? Yeah, that's right, it's working again. I don't believe it myself. I was trying to read the labels in there. They're not coded the same as they would be on a modern dimmer relay. I'm gonna have to do a little research as to what the uh, the codes are on this and how they match up to that of the newer style relay. And um, while I was doinking around under here and I squeezed the box again and I adjusted some of the wires, it started to work. This has happened before. And come to think of it, it's probably when it got wet. Because up underneath this dashboard here, and you can see those two hoses that are running right there, from underneath the dashboard. They are connected to the cowl vents here. But what happens is there's a plastic box that's underneath these vents and there's a seal that runs around the top of it. And that seal rots out. So when that water fills up in that vent faster than that tube can let it out, it puddles up in there and then it overflows around where the seals are at. And then soaks your feet. It gets in the flasher. It gets in the dimmer relay, it gets in the radio, it gets in all the electrical, and that's one of the reasons why I've had electrical problems on this car. Now, my wipers don't work either. I, I probably need to replace the switch, and that's what the previous owner told me. And I actually bought a switch for it almost five years ago. I just haven't done anything with it yet. But I need to get that installed and uh, get it working, but I really have no interest in driving the car when it rains. I just don't. So if I don't drive the car when it rains, I don't have to worry about the cowl leaking, and I don't have to worry about the wipers not working. So that's just me. So I need to do a little research as to how this uh, new dimmer relay is going to work as compared to the the old style and uh, well if it's even gonna work at all probably will I mean I don't see why not I just got to figure out what the appropriate pin out is on it and make it work if the old one's working I'm not gonna bother with it I'm gonna... well I figured for a second I couldn't cop out so I went ahead and pulled out the headlight dimmer out of there and you see it here in my hand and I'm comparing these two and obviously the pin outs are not the same because the wiring is all laid out differently there's a connector called an S and there is an S over here so it will connect to that one is a 56 a which will also connect to the 56 a there's an F over here 
by process of elimination, that's going to go to 56B. That appears to be the high beam wire. And there's also just a 56, which will also go to just the 56 that's on here just the same. But there's going to be one connector that's left open, this one right here. And that one appears to be the connector that's going to be going to a um, external power source because the old classic relay is actually a passive relay. It receives its power from the, the wire that actually feeds power to the uh, headlights. Whereas on here, it receives it from a separate power source entirely. Now what I could do is I could just jump the wire, probably what's going to be from 56, directly into the, um, directly into the input wire, which looks like it's going to be 30. So 56 to 30, I believe I can just bridge those two together because it's it's a constantly hot wire as soon as you turn the headlight on. So there'll be a hot feed and then the flasher, um, or I should say the dimmer switch here, triggers it and then flips it over the other side. So it'll always be hot. So that will probably work just fine. I don't see why not. So I'm going to go ahead and make some connections here and let's see if we can make this thing work. I, I, I just didn't want to cop out and say, oh well, my old one works, let's just leave it alone. No, let's go ahead and actually do a process on this, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll draw a little schematic, and uh, I'll demonstrate how I made this work, just in case anybody else out there has to upgrade to a newer style dimmer relay. Okay, right here on the screen you can see our old relay to the left, and the new replacement relay to the right. Just to make things easy, I made the labels nice and legible for you right here. Now you'll notice the old relay has four pins, and the new relay has five. This is the pin that goes to your dimmer switch. This is the power that comes from your headlight switch. This is the one that goes off to your low beam. And this is the one that goes off to your high beam. And this is the color codes of the wires that correspond to these connections. Now over on the new relay, off here on the right, the old wires will connect to the new relay just like so. Now pin number 30 is our extra pin. This is the one that currently doesn't have a connection but requires one in order to operate. You have to feed positive into this. And one way to do it, as I did, is to run a jumper between 56 and 30. 56 is a live wire as soon as you turn on your headlight switch. And that will then power the relay. It's not a passive style relay like the one of the, uh, uh, like the old vintage Volkswagen one that was in its place. Alternatively, if you don't want to use that jumper for some reason, I don't know why you wouldn't, that's to keep it simple, but you don't have to, you can run an alternative positive wire to somewhere else. Uh, anywhere else that I would suggest is on only when the ignition is turned on. You know, don't hook it up to something that's always on because all it's going to do is, is have the potential of uh, putting a drain on your battery. And, you know, it could technically kill your battery. So anyways, I wouldn't do that. I would just go with the jumper, just keep things simple. Just go ahead and splice into the wire that's on 56 and run it right over to 30 and be done with it. It really is as simple as that. So I hope that helps somebody. Okay. There's our signals flashing in the front. And there's our ones flashing in the back. Obviously we got a problem on that side. I'm gonna check that one out real quick. Let's go ahead and pop it apart. I'll bet it's probably a bad bulb. I changed that out, but you know, it's one of them modern age Chinese bulb craps, so who knows what's wrong with it. Well, one thing's for sure, Volkswagen bulbs are real easy to change. Modern cars, not so much. Some are, you go in through the trunk, but you pop off the lens on a Volkswagen. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. Uh, the filament in there is gone. It's just shot. So it actually burned out a bulb. Not a surprise, and I only just put that in there recently, which aggravates the, just, the dog shit out of me. Why don't bulbs last? Why? Let's see if I got one in my toolbox. I might. If not, I'm going to go buy another one. I hate buying another one. I don't feel I should have to because I just got this one a few months ago. Now check this out. I'm looking more closely at this bulb and I just noticed it now, but it actually says 6 volts on it. You see it right there? Right in the light? 6 volt. That bulb was never even intended for this car to begin with. It was packaged wrong. How the hell does that happen? Six-volt bulbs are so special. It's not something that you get just anywhere. I mean, six-volt bulbs really are unique, but yeah, I bought a brand new 12-volt bulb, and I wound up with a six-volt bulb in the package. I mean, I don't believe it myself. All right, well, anyway. Anyway, I've got another one. It's a 12-volt, but I'm looking at it here. It's only a five-watt, so I don't know if it's going to be bright enough for a signal. The hell, it doesn't even light up. It's Nope, burned out filament, ain't got one. 
<laughs> Try again. All right, in my junk in my toolbox, I found a replacement bulb. It's a 10 watt. I'm not sure if it's gonna be bright enough, but it does have an intact filament. It is amber, but I don't think it's gonna matter too much because once you put the lens on it, I think it's gonna look red anyway. Let's see what we got. There we go. Come on, clip in. There it is. I think that's gonna be just fine. Let's see if we even notice the difference in color. Otherwise, I gotta go to the store and buy a bulb, and I think that's gonna be it's gonna be all right. Yeah, there you go. It looks red on both sides. I don't see any difference in brightness. That's fine. We're gonna go with it. Well, I decided I want to check the brake lights. We don't have one working on that side, but the one over there works just fine. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm gonna pop the lens off of this side and check the bulb. The bulb is probably fried too. Hopefully it's not a six volt. <laughs> well, it's looking mighty black. There it is. Yeah, that bulb is cooked. Pretty much a sure sign when they turn black like that, something's wrong. Anyway, it looks like a single filament, and it looks like the filament is actually intact. But for sure, it's all burned out, but it looks like smoke in there was rising from the inside of the uh, base. It probably wasn't the filament that fried on this. I think something else did. Interesting. Let's see if I have another one of these, otherwise it's run to the store. Anyway, I got one. It's French made. The previous one was Chinese. Let's see if it works. There we go. Uh oh. Got something wrong with my socket in here. There it is. I give that a wipe down. Just like halogen bulbs, they don't like to get overly hot. So you want to try to keep them clean if you can. Let's go ahead and release the brake pedal, turn off the turn signal here, and. Um, Let's see if we have running lights. And that's a yes, they're both working on both sides. I can't believe that I had this many bulb problems and I just went through this thing and checked all the wiring and everything just a few months ago. And these guys, especially on older lenses, don't over tighten them will crack the shit out of them. Get them just tight enough and then just a little twist past that. That's it. That one on that side is looking good. You can see it's old plastic. You can see all the cracks in it. Just stress cracks. Somebody already broke the bottom of it before I even got to it. So currently the only thing that holds it in is actually the top screw. Alright, let's check the front. We've got running lights on both sides and we already know both headlights are working. We do have to check the ground on this side though, and that's under the hood. So let's pop the hood. The headlight ground wires on Volkswagens usually found under the hood, right where the wire comes through underneath the fender. And this includes Beetles. Beetles are this way too, so are Carmen Ghia's. And in this case, it's also Type 3. So right here, up on uh, what would be this spare tire, I guess it's a firewall, you'd find the uh, ground wire right there. So what your best bet is, just try to tighten up the screw that's on it. Yeah, it was a little bit loose. And uh, once you've got that tight, that should almost surely solve your dim headlight problem. 73 Beetle's actually having the same problem too. It's the same place I need to check. But that has almost certainly solved the problem. So uh, we're gonna test that in just a second once we get that relay finish hooked up. I'm really not a fan of these connectors, but I'm gonna take that uh, power in wire that feeds the headlights on the relay and bridge it over to the power in on the relay. And this is just gonna be one of the easier ways to do it. It's a little hard to demonstrate this, and there's not a whole lot of light right now. Yeah, let's just see what happens. I'll do the best I can. If you guys get a good demonstration, that's awesome. If you don't, sorry. All right, cut that wire short. That's going to be the first one that we feed into. The gauge on this is actually a little bit heavy. Anyway, we got the wire fed into the connector, and we need to take the power in from the relay and put it in the other side. And then using a pair of pliers, crush it together and I'm not a big fan of these things if I had more daylight and a little more time I'd make a proper solder connection and then I wouldn't just stop there 
I'd go one step above and beyond that and I would shrink wrap this all so that way you know it's gonna stay together and it's not gonna short out on anything. There's a jumper wire that goes ahead and jumps over to the power feed on the relay and this is the power feed for the headlights. Now that's gonna go on to that last terminal here which is really a pain in the ass to do it one hand. And there it is, everything installed. Now if I got it right and didn't screw anything up and I didn't accidentally yank any wires out from where they belong, you know, up underneath the dashboard, which sometimes happens if you try to pull too much slack, everything should work. And uh, once again, there's my phone. <laughs> All right, we do have headlights. They did come on when I pulled it. Let's see if we have uh, some high beam, low beam action. Yes, we do. I noticed on the new one, you have to actually press it and hold it. It's not instant. That's interesting. It does function though, it's very quiet. I don't know, can you hear it? The old one was really loud and assertive. It let you know, you know, click, 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 click. But anyway, it's working. And there's the indicator light on the dashboard. So anyways, if that helps somebody, please like, comment, and subscribe. Please share this video with your friends. I'm going to go ahead and throw it up on my Facebook group page just the same. So check it out on Duckman Cycles and VW Garage and join that group. We've got almost 350 members on there right now. So thanks for watching. I'm really glad you joined me. Tomorrow we have a car show over in Niceville. So there'll be a video from that and there'll be a follow-up video also at the cruise-in and the trip around the track that takes place the night after. Thanks you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Well anyway, it's nice having high beams at work. Check that out. And turn signals for that matter. One day last week I went through all throttle linkage on here too and got that set up properly. actually hold the high beam low beam stick here for a moment I'll get used to it but it used to be instantaneous you used to just, just tug it for a second and it would just come on but no this actually requires a bunch of uh, and I shouldn't say a bunch of anything it requires an extra moment of holding it in place for it to activate the dimmer oops forgot to shift there we go Nothing like a little left-handed shifting. It's like being in, in England, shifting with the left hand. Okay. I am extremely pleased. I'm gonna call that good to go. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Ooh.